Netflix just did something they've never done before. They published a report detailing the hours viewed for every title they offer. Why is Netflix all of a sudden releasing this data? Well, because they're no longer the underdog. Here's CEO Ted Sarandos. In the earliest days, it really wasn't really in our interest to be that transparent uh, because we were building a new business. Yeah, they're sharing numbers because streaming is now bigger than broadcast and cable. And who's the biggest streamer? Netflix. So they're no longer the underdog, they're the top dog. And they don't mind sharing numbers when they have the biggest numbers. It's a way to say to movie stars and producers, hey, look at our numbers, they're huge. We're bigger than everyone else. You're gonna wanna be on a Netflix show. Anyways, but the data itself, that's what we're interested in because there's something very interesting hiding here. And it's, it's not actually a paper report. That's just a prop I made, it's 2024. The report is actually just a spreadsheet you can download from their website and open in Excel. It's a very simple spreadsheet. It has total hours viewed and a list of every Netflix title. And there are a lot of Netflix titles, about 18,000. And a quick note, if the top five seem to be skewing to new releases, that's because this data is only for January 2023 to June 2023, so not for all time. Okay, let's get to work analyzing this data. We know that we have 18,216 shows. And if we look at millions of hours streamed, we see that 18,125 are between 0 and 100 million hours streamed. 68 shows have between 100 to 200 million hours streamed, and we can go all the way up to 800, where we see only four shows get above 500 million hours streamed. And if we graph the total hours streamed for each show, it looks like this. This is kind of a wild chart. 90% of shows don't break 10 million. They live in this range. But the very, very few that break out don't just break out a little, they break out a lot. The most popular Netflix titles are just so much more popular than the average Netflix title. You've probably experienced this before. I remember when Stranger Things came out, it felt like everyone was talking about it. Now a graph that looks like this is a classic example of a power law. A power law is a mathematical relationship between two quantities. And I'm by no means discovering this phenomenon. I was first tipped off to it in Ben Thompson's Stratechery newsletter, which like everyone in tech reads, it's great. And Ben linked to an amazing blog post by Michael Toberg where he shows how power laws are just all over media. This is the top video game since 1980. This is the top movies since 1970. And here's the top musicians by weeks on the Billboard Hot 100. All three charts share the same distribution. A small amount with a disproportionately large audience, followed by a long tail with much less. You can imagine this playing out across all kinds of media industries. I feel like it wouldn't surprise me if podcasts had a power law too. Someone like Joe Rogan or Office Ladies might be up here, followed by a long tail of podcasts with much smaller audiences. I don't have any data to prove this, it, it just feels possible. Power laws work so well in media because of network effects. Something starts getting traction and people start talking about it, then more people start talking about it when they hear other people talking about it, and it creates a positive feedback loop. But for an example of a power law that is a bit more historical, I think we should consider the Mona Lisa. I took a trip to France in 2016 and visited the Louvre. Most rooms I visited were not that busy. But then I found my way to the Mona Lisa room. And the Mona Lisa room was packed, obviously because it's the most famous painting in the world. Here's the photo I took. This is about as close as I got. Now there are other famous paintings at the Louvre. Like the 12th most famous painting in the world. I don't know. I don't know much about art. But those rooms were not nearly as packed as the Mona Lisa. The most famous painting in the world is just so much more famous than like the 12th most famous painting. At least that's the theory behind a power law. I don't have any nice clear data for paintings like we do now for Netflix titles. So, I think we should always remember. There are tons of shows out there, tons of video games, tons of music artists, tons of movies, but only a very few break out. And those that do break out, don't just break out a little, they break out massively. Does that mean that they are the best? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. 
but I do think it might have something to do with power loss. Thanks for watching.